Okay, guys, I think uh, let's get slowly started. Uh, I know we're in Brazil, so we might have a, a, a few people joining a little after the hour. Um, so we'll just do like a, hi, Sophia, hi, Anna. <laughs> hey, everyone. Yeah, like I said, we're gonna slowly uh, get started and then um, I'll introduce our guest today, Carrie, as well. Uh, but let me first uh, welcome you to our fourth webinar. I was telling Carrie how thankful I am she taught me how to use Zoom. It wasn't, you know, it was a learning, steep learning curve for, uh, for me. Uh, you know, as we were starting the year, I was preparing to start my uh, in-person trainings through the Institute, through the Embody Wellness Institute. But of course the crisis started and I was faced with the choice of like not doing anything or going online, uh, you know, going over that barrier that I had of not wanting to do things online to realizing that that's the best way we can not only do the same things we were doing before, but actually bring in more people, more professionals, reach more people. So I'm very grateful uh, to be able to offer you yet another webinar. Uh, and I'm, also very humbled to have incredible specialists joining us every week uh, to offer us their wisdom, their knowledge, and really helpful tools um, that I think are already helping some of us that already have joined in the, in the, in the past weeks, not only with dealing with the situation in a more, uh, you know, with more peace, uh, kind of being grounded and knowing that this is gonna end, that we can uh, take advantage of this, but also realizing that this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. You know, the world has stopped <laughs> and we have this in-between chance, you know, between the life we had before and the new life that we're about to go into once this ends, to really reconstruct what it is that we are, you know, as human beings, as the self, uh, to understand ourselves better, to connect to this, you know, self-knowledge, uh, understand what it is that we want to bring into this new world, this new era that um, is happening as we speak. So it's also very symbolic today that it's um, April 22nd, it's International Mother Earth Day. Happy Mother Earth Day to everyone. Um, it's, I think it's, and it's also full moon. And I think it's really interesting to think about this. Um, the UN posted a really interesting, I, I posted it on, reposted them on my uh, Instagram, how Mother Earth Day was created with the, not just to, to think about how we need to protect the earth, but to explain this interconnectedness that we have with our earth uh, and that we are nature, nature is us, and there's really no separation between us. And I think what we're going to talk about today, in part, uh, is about that, is about the fact that we are energy, we're pure energy, we're vibrating at, at, at different levels, and we are being called to really try to equalize our vibrations and vibrate at a higher level, uh, not only to get through this difficult moment, but also to, uh, as as the as humanity and as uh, you know or earth to help help us all go into a better direction than we were before um, to heal the you know the earth to heal our own uh, our own selves and uh, to look forward to something that we're going to build together as human beings so um, I think I've talked for a while and I think everyone is already here hopefully um, Carrie, I wanted to introduce you. Um, you know, Carrie is, has been, I think, I don't know how long we've been friends for. It's been years already, like years have gone by. I don't remember when it was four or five years ago. Uh, she's also, a, you know, colleague and partner and we've throughout years exchanged a lot of ideas about different aspects of wellness, energy, and, uh, it's one of the reasons I wanted to invite Carrie is because she combines this idea of, you know, uh, 
the reconnecting the body, mind, and spirit. She's a coach, so she really works with, she's a motivational coach, so she definitely knows how to work the mind. She works with the body uh, through Reiki and through yoga. And she is um, one, one of the most knowledgeable people I know, you know, that really understand how the energy and vibrational fields really affect us, our emotional well-being, and our physical well-being as well. And I think Carrie is going to bring today this, this overlap of the different fields to help us um, deal with the difficult emotions that we're all dealing with uh, in, in this difficult you know, lockdown times. But also to explain, uh, some, just give us some very practical tools and, and exercises on how we can shift our, our vibrational frequencies uh, from lower to higher ones. I let Carrie explain it. It's one, it's relatively new to me. I've I've learned about you know energy work uh, very recently, so uh, I'm not gonna you know lie to you. I'm not knowledgeable about that. I'm learning very quickly. It's a steep curve, but <laughs> Carrie knows about this much more. So Carrie, Carrie and Appleton, welcome. We're really happy to have you. Uh, it's an honor. So please. Thank you, thank you, Bella. I'm excited to be here. So um, as Bella said, like I'm a coach, I work primarily with women, I'm a Reiki master and yoga um, instructor. And I, I sh as Bella so eloquently said, I really like to bring all those pieces together and really look at a more holistic approach to everything in life, not just my well-being, holistic approach to my relationships, my profession, my finances, etc. cetera. Um, and I've been doing this work for a long time, actually over 10 years now, studying neuroscience, epigenetics, quantum physics, energy. Um, and I would say I've, I've, I've been practicing it even longer because as a child, my mom used some of these tools and techniques, some of them I'm gonna share. Um, and I didn't know what they were, I actually thought she was weird. <laughs> I used to be like, mom, stop being like that. But realizing that she was like planting little seeds within me that have really sprouted and grown throughout my life in many different ways. So when Bella asked me, hey, can you come to the webinar and speak about something? Um, I chose this topic, Shifting Vibrational Frequency, because I just launched a program in my group. I have a group of about 1,500 women. Um, and I just launched a program about becoming a master of your energy, because a lot of us are doing energy work and wanting to know what is this thing called our, our energy? Um, and our energy body, um, and how can we connect with it more, sense it more, and um, learn how to work with it to help um, thrive in life, I wanna say. So thrive can mean whatever it means to you, for whatever, so it could be having better health, it could be um, being happier, it could be having better finances, I mean, whatever it means to you, to, so we can thrive in this world. And so I thought this topic, especially as we're going through this pandemic on shifting vibrational frequency might plant some seeds for you um, and give you some more wisdom around your own body, your own being, your own energy, um, and, and help you as we, as we all navigate this and we're all navigating this whole new kind of new normal and what's going to be our new world um, very differently, which is okay which is totally okay because we're all different beings. I know when I talked to Bella leading up to this, she had mentioned that maybe some people within this audience might not know what is vibrational frequency. So I kind of want to start there a little bit, talking a little bit about what is energy, giving you just some wisdom or knowledge and some research around vibrational frequencies so that um, you have a little bit of nuggets. But the most important thing is I could just spout off a ton of facts, right? Um, the most important thing is for you to experience it, to feel it in your own body, to you, for you to be the scientist and then decide for yourself, okay? So just starting as, as um, Bella said, um, everything is energy. I mean, we are 99.99999% energy and 0.0001% matter. And that might be hard for you to conceptualize in the mind, but I want you to think about an atom. I'm gonna take you back to science class, okay? Just briefly, think about an atom. An atom is like so tiny that of course you can't see it with the human eye without, uh, without using some kind of tool to be able to, to see it. Imagine the atom is the size of a baseball stadium, 
not just the field, the stadium itself, okay? And the pitcher's mound, so for those of you that don't know what the pitcher is, it's the person that throws the ball to the batter, because I know baseball is not um, often played here in Brazil that you might not know all the positions, but the pitcher's mound is the nucleus. So if the atom is the whole baseball stadium, the pitcher's mound, the nucleus, what's all the stuff in between, right? Everything is energy in essence. So we're more energy than matter, okay? Um, and so it's important to just, and again, we're not gonna go through all the science. You can do research on this, um, about this. NASA has a ton actually on it, um, if you find this fascinating. But I wanted to kind of give you that idea of like really recognizing that, oh, actually my skin is, is energy, okay? And it moves at a vibration at different frequencies. There's a frequency that this chair that I'm sitting on vibrates at a much different frequency than say my body, than say the air. And I love diving into this work um, or diving into Dr. David Hawkins' work when he talks about the map of consciousness. consciousness. So he talks about that frequency or energy and these frequencies are measured based on Hertz, all right? And our emotions, are, are in different parts of the scale. Now, I don't remember all the numbers, like um, if joy, is, I mean, no joy is a very high frequency. I don't remember the exact hertz that it's at. And then fear is at a, a lower frequency. And so when we're in these higher vibrational frequencies, so, and you know how, you, you know when you're in a, um, a different vibrational frequency based on how you're feeling. And what so often happens is many of us disconnect from our body. So we're more in our heads and less in our body. So we don't actually even know how we're feeling. So let me actually start there. I want you to just sit for a moment and think about how do I feel? And I want you to think about this in two ways. How do I feel in terms of in the mind? So do I feel content right now? Do I feel a little anxious? Do I feel happy? Do I feel sad? Do I feel angry? Just kind of like be in the mind a bit around the feeling. And now I want you to get into the body and just feel the sensations the body is might be making. So thinking about, oh, is there any tightness in my breath? Any tightness in anywhere of my body? And getting into the emotional side because emotion is energy in motion. And the emotion is the sensations that you feel. So for example, if you feel hungry, your body makes, has a reaction to, 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 to signal you, I'm hungry, because if not, you don't know. So it's telling you something, and that's the energy. And then it, you do something because of it. You, most people tend to eat, right? If you're thirsty, you drink, et cetera. The same thing with like an emotion of anger. You feel it physically in your body, okay? So when you think about, okay, anger, that's the, that's the name, that's the label we give the feeling, but the physical sensation, the emotion, the energy in the body is where it shows up in the body. And we're going to experiment a little bit later with feeling some of those um, energies, and then you'll see how your body shows up more and more. But most of us are so disconnected from our bodies. We don't take the time to just Oh, let me see how I feel in my body. What are the sensations in the body? Okay. And the reasons why you want to know this is because the mind can create a sensation so easily, which means you have so much control and power over your body. You don't even realize it. Were you going to ask a question, Bella? Yeah, I just, um, so just to understand correctly. So the feeling is, um, is our interpretation of the sensation in the body. Or is it, is it the way that we interpret what we're feeling in the body? Is it sort of, it's kind of like how it real or yeah. is it not? You know what I mean? Is it so feeling and emotion are, are the same and yet different. So feeling is the label we give the emotion, the energy, the sensation we're feeling. Okay. So if I say I feel angry right now, right. It is also the emotion of anger, but the emotion is the actual sensation. So for me, because I'm so attuned with my body, generally when I feel just a little bit of anger, maybe frustration, upset, I get a tightness in my upper back and it feels warm. If I feel really like 
pissed off at someone, I get tightness in my jaw. Okay. So that's the, that's the emotion that I'm feeling and it's anger for me. Does that make sense? Yeah, totally. That's, that's okay. The I make. Okay. Thank awesome. You. Thanks for the question. Um, cause I think, I mean, the two are basically the same, but one is how we label it. And one is how we feel it in the body, the sensations that we describe as it shows up in the body. And that's the, the chemical reaction your body is creating. Going back to how powerful our mind is, um, we just by thought alone, we can create an emotion in our body. We can create a sensation in our body. So if we can create just by thought alone, like say f activate fear, activate sadness, activate anger, then we can also create joy, love, appreciation, gratitude, higher vibrational frequencies. The thing about it is we have to become an observer of both our mind and our body and, and train ourselves to switch, to go into those higher vibrational frequencies. Is that making sense? Completely. Okay. Completely. I wasn't sure if you had another question. Yes. No, no. <laughs> okay. Awesome. If so, anyone has a question, you guys can either, uh, I think we'll have time for questions afterwards yeah, yeah. but but if you have like a burning question just uh, type it in yeah. and I'll, I'll ask Carrie yep so um, what research has noticed is that when you live in those lower states of uh, lower frequencies and you're not you're gonna be as a human you're gonna dip down into them you're gonna feel fear you're gonna feel sadness you're gonna feel anger you're gonna feel hatred you're normal it's human it doesn't mean you're bad it doesn't mean you're gonna get sick it's when you stay in those and you don't know how to process them to move back up to higher vibrational frequency. So in my training in conscious leadership, we talk about, are you above or below the line? So when you're below the line, you're in a state of survival, you're in fear, anger, sadness, hatred, those kind of really yucky feelings, like they don't feel good. Um, and when you're above the line, you're thriving, you're creative, you're joyful, you're celebratory, you're, you're feeling pleasure. It's a, it feels awesome, it feels light, you feel open, you feel on top of the world. So I'm gonna use that terminology above and below the line. And as I said, it's normal as a human to go below the line. It's just when we tend to stay there or we don't know how to process the emotion. And so I wanna talk about that as well, um, is learning how to start to process your, all of your emotions in healthy ways to get them out of the body. Because remember, the Latin root for emotion is energy in motion. And so when we don't process it and we stay in it, that energy is just staying in our body. And what ends up happening is we come out of homeostasis. And hey, Carrie, I just want to, sorry to interrupt. I just wanted to add to that. It's so, um, you know, in the, in the work that, that, that I've done before, you know, it, it's totally reinforcing what you're saying in that, you know, when we are in those lower energies, um, um, you know, if you, if you look at the stress reaction in the body, right? Um, if, if we are in a fight and flight reaction in psychology, right? When we're, uh, this is the same as you're describing, like fear or anger or frustration, which are activated when, when we are trying to run away from something or, mm -hmm. right? Or when we're trying to fight with someone, if we don't do anything about it, you know, they were, they were really important for our survival back in the day. But nowadays we don't really process them. They stay there. And what happens is they, uh, basically kill our immune response, right? They only focus on that runaway reaction. And so our body, body's immune system is completely shut down. So I think it's so important for you to talk about this because we all obviously need to worry about immune response right now. And, and we don't realize how much our emotions are affecting that. So I just wanted yep. to- Yeah, uh, no, that's sure great segue. Saying. And actually when, what chemically happens in the body when you go into fear. So for example, right now, a lot of people watch the news and they're like, oh my God, the cases are going high, higher, the deaths are going higher and you know, all, all sorts of stuff. There's all these conspiracy theories, all sorts of information out there and it triggers us. And we don't even realize because we've been we normalized to stress, if that makes sense. And as Bella said, what happens chemically in the body is blood rushes to the limbs and away from the internal organs. So your internal organs don't have as much to work on to keep your immune system strong, your body going. And so it's learning to like, oh, recognize, oh, I'm in fear. I'm feeling anxious. I'm feeling worried. 
and then moving through that energy and coming back to self-regulate and coming back into more of a parasympathetic nervous system so that you can then easily raise your vibration and be in a, a state of love or joy or peace, etc. So I want to give you, first of all, a tip. And you might, if you have paper and pen, you might want to write this down. Or not a tip, but a process I use with my coaching clients, um, I use in my courses, and I use myself. And it's around how to start connecting with your emotions more and start to move them out of the body. So the first thing to do is name it. Name what you're feeling. So if it's anger, it's anger. Frustration, upset, worry, even the higher vibrational frequencies like joy, love. Name the emotion and then locate it in the body, going, huh, where is this showing up? And we're going to practice this, by the way. What if so, we don't know how to call it? <laughs> Sometimes we feel things that we don't know, you know what they are and, necessarily. And that's okay. And okay. It, just say, I'm feeling something. So you're, what you're doing is you're bringing your mind and awareness to it. And that's why you name it or I'm feeling something. Okay, where am I feeling this in my body? Okay, I feel it in my throat. Okay, can I describe what it feels like? What are the sensations that my body's creating that reaction? Um, it feels scratchy, it feels tight, it's on the left side. For each of us, it's gonna be different how it shows up. It could be a color that comes up for you, it could be an image. And then breathe into it and say, what is it that it wants to do? And get out of your mind, because your mind will go, well, I don't know, maybe I should put my hand there, maybe I should drink water, because I'm thinking about the throat, um, versus getting into your body, and maybe your body is like, I just need to sigh. Maybe that's the thing. Like, ah. And maybe you do that a few times, and the energy will start moving. Sometimes the body says, do nothing, just be in the energy, and allow it to dissipate. It's like a fog, okay? So I want to give you guys, so remember, name it. And if, if naming it is like, I'm just feeling something, you can't actually put a label on it, but I'm feeling something. Locate it where you're feeling it in your body. This gets you out of the mind and into the body. And this actually gives the body permission to, uh, to, to uh, start moving that energy. Dis sensations, what are you feeling? The reason also why you describe the sensations is you're going to start attuning to your body. You're going to know what anger feels like for you. You're going to know what sadness feels like for you. You're going to know what joy feels like for you the more that you listen to your body. And then breathe into it. That's the fourth step. And allow it to do what it needs to do. Like, what does it want to do right now? And just give it permission. The hardest part of this as you start this journey is you're going to be in your head. Because you have been, most of us have been in our head processing and analyzing and controlling everything. And we don't give our body an opportunity to just do what it naturally does so wonderfully for us. So let's get into um, experimenting with this so you can have a feeling of it yourself. So I'm gonna take you first into an emotion that's caught below the line. So, um, and I want you to really feel it in your, in, in get into your body. And it might be uncomfortable, but I'm gonna promise you, you're safe, okay? You're safe in this space, a bear is not running at you, you're gonna be okay but it might feel uncomfortable as I guide you through this. So I'm gonna also ask you if you can close your eyes. I'm not gonna close my eyes, but if you wanna close your eyes, because I want you to fully be in your body as much as possible, okay? And just to get you into your body, just focus on your breath and particularly focus on the movements that your lungs make as you breathe in and as you breathe out. Notice how the air enters your body and exits your body. And just begin to relax. And I want you to think about something you did as a child that you absolutely loved doing. And really try to pull in that image and that activity into your mind that you just love doing. And recognize how you feel in your body, right? Is there any sensations showing up as you remember that activity you love doing as a child? Mm 
Now I want you to see your mom or your dad, you can choose whichever one comes up first, looking at you and said, you are awful at doing that. You're terrible at doing that. And recognize as your parent, your mom or your dad says that, how your body changed. Recognize where you're feeling it in your body. And describe in your mind uh, to yourself basically how it feels in your body hearing someone tell you you're terrible. So especially someone you love so much, you're terrible at that. And then come back to the space you're in. Imagine that you just, you know, if you want to imagine or actually physically shake your body a little bit, wiggle your toes and, and then open your eyes. What I'd love to hear if a few people want to share how they felt. If anyone's willing to share, and even Bella, if you want to sh share. And again, each of us are going to feel something different. Each of us are going to have a different reaction because I'm trying to trigger you the best way I could. Oh, I'll share, although my, my mom is here. <laughs> 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 so, but I guess it's good. No, I was really loud and, and like I liked reciting poetry and singing as a child. And I imagined myself doing that. And then I just imagined my mom yelling at me for being too loud. I don't think she ever okay. did it in that way, but I'm sure, you know. It felt, uh, how did you feel? Oh, it felt terrible. It felt like, you know, my stomach got really tight. Um, just kind of everything went like my, my chest area also kind of, you know, crouched mm -hmm. a little bit and, you know, it's almost like someone punched me in the stomach. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah. Great. So th that was great that you really connected with your body and you, you had the words to describe how you felt. So you're more in tune with your, your body. So thank you, Bella. Is there anyone else who, um, you guys can also write it. Yeah, you can you write, write it or you can unmute yourself if you want to share, if there's at least one more, any willing participant. Volunteers or I'm going to call on someone. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. You, we don't want to force you. Oh, oh, okay. Um, Hi, Anna. Hi. Um, I, I realized that I'd stopped breathing, like I just held my breath. Okay. And yeah. So that was quite clear for me. I was like, where am I feeling this? And then all of a sudden I realized that I wasn't making, <laughs> my lungs okay. actually weren't working. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks for sharing. Okay. So I want to ask you all of you guys now to put your hands on your hips and almost like a peacock oh, spreading its wings. I want you to put your hands kind of on your hips. You can put them in fists or grab your hips and open your chest up. And just start to shift that energy that we just created. As Bella said, she felt contracted, you know? And so we're just doing a simple body shift move to open it up. Now this might not move all the energy that created because I might've really triggered you. Um, and that's okay. We're gonna, I'm gonna do the opposite. I'm gonna trigger you in another way, okay? Now, as you just saw from both you being the scientist um, and what uh, um, Bella and Anna shared, by pure thought alone, because this wasn't happening actually in the time that we were doing it. It was, it was one imaginary, it was from your past, something that happened in your past, or I created a scenario that I took from your past and I created a, like a drama out of it and your body physically reacted. And that I wanted you to recognize how powerful you are. We're gonna now bring you into a higher vibrational frequency, but by thought alone, you created that within yourself. So that also says you have the power to create a higher vibrational state. So let's practice that more higher vibrational state. Now you don't always have to do it like this, and I'm gonna give you a couple of tips on what to do where you have to visualize something in this manner. Um, but this is just one way to help you to shift your frequency. So go ahead and close your eyes again and connect back with your body. This time I want you to try to focus on the bottom of your feet. Recognize if you're barefoot or if you're wearing shoes or socks. 
Just notice how your feet feel, how your toes feel, maybe move them a little bit and really connect with them. And just start to get out of the mind. And think about your, the, the thing you love to eat the most. Something that you just really love eating. Just think about how much joy it brings you to have that special dish or special item. No guilt, no shame. Now imagine you're describing to somebody else why you enjoy eating this food, this dish, this item. And try to describe it to them as if it's like your birthday and you've just received the best present in the world. And then notice how you feel in your body. So what sensations are showing up and, and locating them? Where are they showing up for you? Really tune into that, those sensations and how they feel. These are the sensations you want to memorize more. You want to really associate with them more. So kind of soak it in. And then come back to the space you're in. Maybe recognize what you're sitting on. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes. And who would like to share how that experience was for them? And Bella, you can, of course, share. Well, this is Jackie. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can yeah, hear you, Jackie. Jackie. Let's hey. hear it. <laughs> yeah, so I thought about a very delicious chocolate that I eat when generally I'm traveling abroad. So okay. <laughs> what I felt was that my mouth started watering, <laughs> just remembering <laughs> the taste and yep. <laughs> the sensation was amazing. Thank you. Yeah, nice. Good. I imagine it, most people will probably have that um, saliva reaction. Yep. Yeah. And again, <laughs> By pure thought alone, you created that in your body. You weren't actually eating it. You weren't actually, so I'm noticing Danielle. Danielle yeah, she thought her. of chocolate mousse too. <laughs> yeah. 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 Chocolate is awesome. a favorite for a lot of people. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Okay, we're gonna do one more. So that was kind of a midpoint in terms of vibrational frequency. We're gonna do one more. So I kind of took you low into maybe a fear, anger feeling, um, really feeling upset moving into a kind of a more midpoint and now we're going to go higher so go ahead and get into that um just relaxed state closing your eyes coming back into your body maybe relaxing your chin allow your shoulders to relax And I want you to think about something you love. It could be a person, it could be a place. There's no right or wrong, but something you just really love so much. And think about it with so much detail. And notice as you think about something you love so much and you really bring it into your mind with as much vibrancy, color, detail as possible. Notice where you feel it in your body and how it feels in your body.
And wherever you're feeling it in your body, I want you to place your hand on that place where you're feeling it. So if you're feeling it in your heart, in your arms, in your shoulders, I mean, there's no right or wrong. And just notice as you put your hand on that, how the energy starts to shift and starts to change or it starts to expand. And again, there's no right or wrong here. I really want you to soak this one in because this is a high vibrational frequency. So do everything you can to memorize, not just in your mind, but memorize it in your body. It's like learning to ride a bike. The more we practice and then we don't ride a bike for 10 years, our body still remembers. This is a high vibrational frequency. This is one of the highest vibrational frequencies. So start to create a memory, a connection with it. And then come back to the space you're in, really trying to carry that feeling of love within your body and go ahead and open your eyes. And then let me know if any volunteers want to share how they felt with that one. Uh, Lamar, I think Lamar wants to share. Oh, let me unmute you. I okay. um, memorized the old city in Damascus in Syria that my beloved. It's historical mm -hmm. one. It's really nice. And I feel my heart like bombing. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Great. Thank I you. feel the energy you said when you said put your hand on your heart. So I feel it really bombing. Yep, yep. Anyone else want to share their experience? I can, I mean, I can go if anyone else doesn't. <laughs> yeah, it's all right. Go ahead, Bella. I was definitely on a plane on, on, en route to Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> to, the, to the beach and you know just enjoying myself there so I just I just felt like so awesome. relaxed all of a sudden you know that whole mm -hmm. uh, I'm on vacation mode just like yep. you know in uh, two seconds I was almost almost as relaxed as if I was laying on the beach in Mexico so <laughs> okay 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 awesome awesome yeah, yeah. So as you were the scientist, there were probably a lot of different feelings you felt with the three kind of experiments that we did. And again, I just want to reiterate that you created that reaction in your body, within yourself. It was based on what you were thinking that created the story, that created the feeling, all right? So know that you have the power to shift your frequency. So when you're below the line, and again, it's normal to be below the line. You are human. You're going to feel fear. You're going to feel anger. You're going to feel sadness and all of those kind of hatred at times. And no judgment, no blame, no shame. But it's learning not to stay in them. So when you do feel it is to go right into the body and name it locate it, describe it, and ask it what it wants to do to move and help it to just move out. For me, sometimes it's release writing. Sometimes it's just a sigh. Sometimes what, you know, as you do this more and more and you get comfortable with really feeling your emotions, then it's so much easier to go back above the line and to shift and to love and to gratitude and to joy and to happiness, that kind of stuff. And when you are more above the line, your body is more in homeostasis because you're more relaxed, your blood, you have got a good blood flow you're, you're, um, in, into your internal organs and you're staying in better health and better immunity and your body can do what it's meant to do. And it's miraculous actually. Is this making sense? Yes, definitely. Um, I, I did also yes. want to ask about, oh, go ahead, Wellington? Yeah, yes, completely. Okay. Make, makes sense, indeed. Thanks. Thanks, Wellington. I did also want to ask you, Carrie, you, since uh, you practice yoga, are there any, uh, you know, moves or anything that actually can help us do that as well? Um, aside yep. from, you know, if we have, if some people have difficulties imagining things, maybe to add to that something that you yep. do with your yep. you know, body work. 
Yeah, so there's a couple of different moves that you can do. So one is, we did it earlier, the power pose, hands, hands on the hips, opening the chest, because you're literally opening the chest and the heart up area up. So you can experiment with this too. So if you slouch and close yourself, just notice how your energy in your body feels. You can close your eyes and just feel, okay, how do I feel? Now, if you open the shoulders up, open the heart, expand the chest, open the body up, just notice how you feel. And what about smiling? Noticing how, like when you smile, how you shift your energy. There's a lot of different poses in yoga that are great for heart opening. Um, I mean, as much as if you can't do a, like a lot of stuff, a basic one besides the power pose, you know, lay on your stomach and do a slight back bend into cobra. It opens up the chest, opens up the heart, for example. If you want to do more other, other types of poses um, that you would know in yoga, I mean, any of the, like the warrior poses. Um, actually, last night we did a triangle pose and really opens up the lungs. Anything that's opening up the chest, but you have to be conscious of it because what often happens in yoga is we'll drop the shoulder, we'll drop one. It's opening up that shoulder. And I think partly because we're not used to opening this way. We sit and we slouch with our, in front of our computer and just opening up the chest for some simple moves. Well, that's if you want to say it's like it's natural when we're stressed or at least for me uh, and I, I know a lot of other people too you know when you're working and then you get that stress you know stressful email mm -hmm. or you know a call that you don't want you're like oh i don't want to pick up that call like immediately you know your shoulders go this way and yep. you stop breathing so i think like you're yep. doing the opposite of that right yeah breathing itself so whether you do pranayama breathing if you don't know what that is i mean just google it there's tons of techniques out there last week andrea was on um this webinar she did sound healing i mean go back and look at that video and just the especially the last 30 minutes when she did the the walked you through the sound healing and the different chakras that kind of stuff can help you um shift your vibrational frequency especially as you begin to dive into this and if you're not as connected with your body it won't come as naturally for you. But the more that you attune yourself to your body, the easier it gets. So now, like, I can think about the word love most of the time, and instantly I start just feeling it. I don't have to visualize something to remind me of what I love. I don't have to um, necessarily breathe or do a, do a power pose, for example. I can think about just love. I want to feel love and start feeling it. Can I do it all the time? No, because sometimes I'm in a, like, a big emotion and I need to move through that emotion in order to get to that space and using the technique that I talked about to just move the energy through, through the emotion will help you become more attuned to your body it is a practice you actually when you were first born you knew what you, what all your emotions and your energy was you didn't consciously know but your body knew if you watch a child especially in the first couple of years of life. I mean, they just move their, their emotions so eloquently. But we now hold on to them. So for example, breathing is such a great one because when we're in stress, right, or we're in fear, we contract and we close off our lung and we, our breath, we either hold our breath or our breath gets shorter, right? When we just start breathing, and I think you're having Philippa on in a couple of weeks, right? And she's going to talk about this. So I won't yeah, dive definitely. into into her breathwork stuff. But when you start to just breathe, that also gets you out of the sympathetic nervous system and into the parasympathetic and, and you start to regulate yourself. Okay. Is that making sense? Yeah, I have a quick question. Uh, and, and I think we can then also like welcome more questions. And yeah. We can, but um, one of the uh, you talked about this too in other places. Like uh, it, sometimes we have some emotions and feelings that we do need to um, sort of feel for a while. Like let's say anger, or you know, there there are some circumstances in which we we it's we need to kind of um, allow to uh, allow ourselves to feel anger, right? But then there are times when, you know, we, we really do need to shift from that anger to something else. How do you, how do you distinguish when it's an emotion that, um, that sort of, you know, that we're watching the news, like there's no reason to get stressed out about it, right? 
even though you know it's real we have the re and others where you know like we need to feel it in order to act on it in some way that's important or understand what's behind it do you have great, a way to great question so i look at our emotions like a dashboard of a car they're telling us something so for example when you get angry when you feel you're feeling anger frustration upset those are kind of all derivatives of anger it's saying something's not working that should be working that you think should be working or an agreement has been broke or an expectation you're having an expectation hangover as christine hassler would call it um so for example um you see something on the news you don't agree with it you think that doesn't that doesn't work you you know from your point of view you get angry at it right um sadness says it's time to let go uh, grieve so it could be letting go of something physical it could be letting go of a relationship it could be let, letting go of the fact that you were going to make a fabulous dinner and you burnt the dinner and you might feel some sadness because you were so excited you had this expectation and you're feeling disappointed you might feel a little bit of sadness and it's okay you just have to let go and the, the other thing I'm going to tell you guys, as you do this work and start feeling these feelings, they normally move through you in 90 seconds when you give them full permission to move versus hanging on to them and being upset, right? So when you feel fear, it usually says you're not in the present moment. You're either in the past or you're in the future, but you're not here in this present moment. Just like I had you guys think about something and you, it wasn't even here in this moment, but it created that chemical reaction. So it says, become present, become present. And then get curious about what am I afraid of? Oh, I'm afraid of that if we say, for example, we continue in quarantine for 18 months before they get a vaccination, oh my God, will I have a job? Will I be able to survive? You're already creating a state of fear with something that has not happened yet. It might, it might not. So at first is like, it's, you can't work through something in the, the, in the emotional state. So you want to regulate yourself and go, oh, I'm in fear. Okay, let me breathe and come down, breathe and come down, and then make a move from there. Like, okay, in this moment, I have money coming in. What can I start doing to make sure that I continue to have money coming in? And knowing that I'm going to be navigating through a tons of changes right now. I think we're all feeling constant change and we don't know what the next change is right um i know especially Rio, no, go ahead no it's just like especially because you know if we are in that state of fear and anxiety uh, and we stay there we we won't be able to make right decisions or be creative about you know what what can we do? You know, what can we mm -hmm. uh, do differently in our business or, you yeah. know, what can we do to yeah. stay healthy? Like all of those things become kind of blurred or blurred, right? Because of that stress that we're in. It's just blind. It yeah. blinds us in a, in a very like yeah. real way. Right. Yeah. Because of that heightened emotion that we're in, especially the lower frequencies, they feel much more heavier and they're, it's harder to, to then shift and change and come find more clarity. Um, you're going to, you're, I just want to say, as you do this, you're human. And as you practice this, you're going to make mistakes. I still do today. So what's great is that once you just recognize the emotion, then you come back and regulate yourself and then do something about it. So for example, if you burnt your dinner and you're upset at yourself and you're sad, you can have both emotions because you're disappointed and you're like, Oh, I was really wanted this dinner, you know, then you can change how you do it next time. If you're upset with your partner about something because you had an agreement, it was broken. If you react while you're feeling the emotion, it usually comes out ugly and awful and you feel shame and you just make it worse. We're human and we do do this. So realize that, okay? But if you wanna practice, just, okay, look, I need to like take a breather and just feel the anger I'm feeling. And then going, okay, I need to now have a conversation with my partner about, what happened and get some clarity and try to fix what we agreed upon and get it back on track. Does that make sense? Just on a personal note. I mean, that happens a lot. And, you know, often when I, when I very few times when I do the practice, you suggest, you know, sometimes I'm like, okay, I'm not going to say anything. I'm going to normally, I won't uh, pick a fight. And normally I'll realize that my anger is more related to things that I'm feeling or that I'm triggered for things that have nothing to do with my partner, but with me. And it, you know, makes, makes the fight unnecessary. So 
Yeah, I yep. totally, yep. I totally yep. vouch for, you know. And let me just tell you, oftentimes what we're feeling is we're being triggered by an experience from our past that's in our subconscious that we don't even know. So Jackie asked a question and I noticed it was just to me, um, but it's a great question. She talked about what, what do you do when someone's panic feeling gets to us? So I'm assuming Jackie, that's when somebody else is panicking, when it's where you're starting to feel it. So there's a couple of things that I talk about in my energy work is that that's not your energy. So put that even just a, you know, in the visible boundaries to say, okay, that's their energy. I'm going to hold space for them if you're willing to. And if you can't, that's okay. Just honor that. I can't, I can't be in this energy and there's no judgment towards them, but they're having this a, a panic, anger, whatever they're feeling, but it's their energy. So you don't need to take it on. It's not yours and it really should be theirs. I think so often many of us, um, and I'm, I'm guilty of this, I'm a recovering people pleaser, I would just take things on from other people and then it became mine and I felt the weight of the world and I, I was enabling them. So I just, okay, that's theirs, but I can hold space for them and give them love and hope that they're going to move through that energy, right? If it's triggering you, then it's an opportunity for you to look inward and go, who, where does this trigger me? So I'll give you an example. In my last relationship, when my partner started to express anger, it triggered me so badly that I literally, the first time he expressed anger and it wasn't at me, he was just angry about a situation at work. I literally sat down on the couch and pulled my legs into my chest. And then I realized, I'm kind of getting into a little ball. I started getting curious with it and realizing it was something from my past that kept, that you know because I had a I had a pretty normal childhood for the most part but I did have a family member that at times got verbally abusive and I went into a small ball during that those times that was my reaction so it was an opportunity for me to heal that and then because I healed that when my partner got angry about something at work or about politics or something I didn't react anymore to it. I didn't get triggered by it. I could be in it and still he owned it. He owned the energy. I could just be there. So hopefully that makes sense. Hi, Carrie. This is Raphael. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Hi. No, thanks again for the presentation. Yeah, my question was actually really related to what you were saying now. How uh, I feel a lot of energy from other people when I'm around them. So mm -hmm. how, how can you um, help block or minimize energy that other people um, uh, out when you're when you're near them um, yeah how can you block it how can you minimize it to yep. speak so you don't get that great great question um, I'm an empath and actually everyone technically it can be an empath when you tune into your body and so it's so easy for me I used to be really easy for me to absorb other people's energy so one of the things I had to learn was not just shielding their energy but realizing so there's two things Raphael would say is I I literally visualize a shield, especially like, for example, my first carnival here when I lived in, when I first moved to Brazil, it was terrible for me. I would come out exhausted and I was like, why am I exhausted? It's not just the, the dancing and because I'm like, I'm running half marathons. Like I, I can go all day. Why am I exhausted? And why do I also feel somewhat like, like depressed and realizing I was taking on other people's energy. So I had to learn to shield myself. And for me, I um, create almost like a little translucent shield around me. I visualize it. That's been my technique. And so now when I go into large crowds, into in places like carnival events, blocko parties, I, I don't take on those energies anymore. And it's so, so nice. And another thing I realized, this is kind of a little woo-woo maybe for some people, was when I do put the shield up and I go in, I don't get as much people attracted to me, if that makes sense. Not, and I'm not talking about the physical attraction in, in, in essence, but before, because I was so open and I so want to receive everyone, let me take on the world, let me save the world. I mean, I, people energetically were coming to me and there was almost like they could dump their energy on me. And as a coach, I had, again, had to learn, okay, I got to shield this or I'm constantly going to be sick and constantly going to be exhausted. So I learned, and for me, I just create this translucent shield. The other thing I do, the two other things I do is one is I clear my energy. I don't have to do it as much, but I used to do it daily. And you could do it through all sorts of different practices. You can breathe and do like a Kundalini breathing and moving your energy in and out, up and out, in, up and down the spine 
you can imagine cleaning your energy. You can do kind of movement, so yoga, dancing. Um, you could sing using your expression to move energy. Um, you can get a massage. You can get. You can do spiritual uh, bathing. You guys here in Brazil do this, which is something I learned here. Where like you take a bunch of herbs that have different properties and you boil it in water and then you cool it and then you strain the herbs out and then you you dump it from your shoulders down I think that's so cool and for me I really feel that okay really feel into that um, so hopefully these some of these techniques will help with clearing but the other thing that also I realized because I think sometimes we get into this victim mentality and we go oh someone's dumping their energy on me well you have power to say that's your energy I'm giving that energy to you you keep that energy and it's not a judgment, but it's yours. It's your journey to deal with it. This is how you will grow and learn. And I'm going to keep my energy and I'm responsible for myself. Is that helpful, Raphael? <laughs> I think, uh, yeah, Raphael yeah, said definitely. that he's going to create a shield with my daughter because Luli is creating <laughs> shields for everyone at <laughs> the Cavaleiros. But anyways, inside you. <laughs> yeah, we can do it. We can do You're it welcome. together. But, uh, you know, um, just to add to that, I, um, I, I, um, I had the same problem that uh, Rafa and Carrie, you guys had, and uh, just taking in a lot of uh, energy from, from everyone and from all the news and from all of that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we have to really make a distinction that, you know, it's really important for us to be, feel empathy for others because there's also the other extreme where people just don't feel anything. So, mm -hmm. you know, I think, but to realize that, uh, not allowing it to enter directly into you is totally okay. You're still empathetic. You're still caring for that person mm -hmm. or for that uh, situation, but you're not, you don't have to take it on yourself. And yep. for me, it wasn't a shield. It was a bubble. <laughs> I imagine yeah. walking in a big bubble, but there's going to be a number of different yeah. ways, right? That you can yeah, of course. And yeah. what works for you, what you resonate, you have to, there's not one way to do this. So you have to figure that out for yourself. And the more you become in tune with your energy and you feel it, I mean, you, it will be interesting. Like I'll be in a business meeting and all of a sudden I'm like, Ooh, what do I feel in my gut? I'm like, Ooh, I have fear. And I start to get curious. Like, what am I afraid of? Oh, they're asking me to do something that I'm not sure that I can hundred percent deliver. But sometimes I feel it first now before I actually think it. So the more you do this work, the more you become attuned to it. The other thing that's beautiful about empathy, as Bella said, and especially as a coach, um, I, want to, I want to understand that person as best as I can. And so if I can tap into their energy instead of feeling their energy, but tap into it and understand the essence of their energy, it helps guide me better. And it helps me, it helps me guide them better, actually. Um, and I can... And I also, it's not just the energy. I also do ask questions because again, the mind overrides a lot of stuff. Um, and to, to try to seek to understand, to really put myself in their shoes without taking on their energy and their identity. So that's been a trick. And part of it is just thinking about, I want to tap in. It's like looking at a piece of art without being the art, but fully understanding the art as much as you can. And then you start to understand other people and you separate. I mean, we're all one in, in this collective, but we're also individual units. And what's so important is we need to take responsibility for ourselves first. You put your oxygen mask on first. And when we start taking care of ourselves first, then we have the capacity to then support others. Instead of uh, so many of us constantly look outside of us and try to fix everything outside of us, we don't fix the most important thing. We don't work on the most important thing, which is ourselves. So start here. Other questions? I think that's Ryan, a really powerful, time. that's a really powerful way to, uh, you know, conclude. I think what you, you've been saying is that, you know, we all have a responsibility uh, for everything that's happening, right? But at the same time, if we, we have the first place to start is us, right? We have to mm -hmm. take care of ourselves first. If we're not well, we can't fix this world, right? We can't fix our societies. We can't fix our relationships, right? We have to first and foremost, uh, clean our energy fields so that we can contribute to better relationships, you know, a better society and better world, I think. So Carrie, it's, uh, 
It was really, really, I, I have a couple of people already sending me private messages asking if they can talk to you in, uh, in private and a lot of people saying that it was a very, very uh, powerful webinar. Uh, and lots of people are put, gonna put a lot of these practices into action, which makes me really happy because that's one of the reasons that you know, I, I wanna have these webinars is to help people gain these, like they're really simple tools that can make a big difference, right? So mm -hmm. I really thank you for sharing, for you know, spending your time with us, for sharing your wisdom, for sharing your tools. They're really cool, simple and fun at the same time. Um, and I want to invite everyone to continue uh, participating in our Wednesday webinars. Uh, I'm going to just very quickly send you in a group, this uh, Facebook group. If you guys join, you can see both Carrie's webinar, uh, the recording of it, um, connect with her. I think I'll share your contact if you don't mind on that group uh, so people can reach out to if they want to learn more. And they can also, I was going to say, my, web, my website is super simple. It's my first name, even with the hyphen, dot com. Awesome. And yeah, I'll um, the group. go ahead. No, I was going to say, I'll leave it in the chat. Perfect. Yeah, leave it in the chat, but I'll also uh, make sure I put it in this group uh, if you guys want to watch it. And I just wanted to leave you with uh, upcoming webinars here. Uh, can you guys see it? Carrie, could, could, could you see Yeah, that? I can see it. Yep. So we've already had Andrea and Carrie that are on here. And then upcoming uh, webinar will be with Maria, uh, who is gonna talk about the mind, the, the power of our mind in creating, uh, in, she's gonna share with us some quantic uh, and access tools to, you know, for working with our mind to change our, uh, in, improve not only our, you know, kind of well being, but our immunity. Uh, and then uh, the week after, we're going to have Liana share with us on how we can reconnect to our uh, partners uh, sexually, which is a very important aspect of well-being we need to be discussing as well. Then we'll have uh, Fabiana talk about uh, dance and Reiki and how those can help us through this time. Then Philippa with uh, transformational breathing. We have many more, uh, but I just wanted to leave you with the upcoming four. Uh, Carrie, once again, thank you very much uh, for joining us let me stop the screen if you guys want to join i mean it's all in body wellness this is pretty easy to find us as well uh, i'm going to stop sharing this and so thank you again uh everyone if you guys have more questions for carrie or for myself uh you can send send them to us through the group or uh, i think most of us most of you have our personal contacts as well so thank you again carrie you're welcome. Thank you guys for participating and being little scientists. <laughs> thank you. Gary and Ella. Thank you, Wellington. Thank you, Wellington. Thank Have you a good Wellington. night, you guys. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye.